Sat call, Mr. Sunil uh, Nanutka, my friend Maruf, and Marshal Naresh Varma, uh, Professor Ricky Lee, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, uh, let me apologize for coming late. I was caught in the other part of town and the traffic was really bad, so I got delayed. My sincere apologies. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to be with you this morning on this subject of great topical importance for India. And let me compliment uh, Mr. Sanath Kohl, Mr. Varma, and the entire team for organizing this uh, unique initiative. India's uh, space odyssey began in the early 1960s with the launch of a of a sounding rocket, the Nike Apache, which was supplied by NASA. In this period, spanning about close to 60 years, India's credential as a space power has grown enormously. And today we are amongst the top four countries in space exploration and capability. The indigenously, indigenously designed and developed India's Indian remote sensing and the Indian National Satellite System, INSAT Satellites Series, have been operating in the entire Asia-Pacific region, offering communications and imagery services in multiple resolutions, bands, and swaths to cater to a wide user base in India and in the neighborhood. More recent success includes the Chandrayaan-1, Mangalyan, IRNSS, or NAVIC program, the ASAT capability development, and significant design improvements in the launch vehicle and Earth-based processing analytics. We've also set up the Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology about 12 years ago to develop the best possible HR base for the strategic sector. However, my view is that we cannot rest on our laurels as the global space sector is undergoing extremely rapid transformation as space-based applications have witnessed tectonic changes. What was once curiosity for scientists has become cash for business today. Due to the importance of the services that space-based systems provide for civil society and national security, New use cases are being progressively innovated, that is disrupting the space economy as we know it. In the security architecture of nation states, the United States has the Air Force Space Command that is responsible for ensuring the friendly use of space, as well as counter space operations for those disturbing the order, and providing space-based services such as communications, navigation, weather protection, and intelligence to improve operations. India has established the Defense Space Agency and the Defense Space Research Organization in the interest of national security. With substantial and, and highly qualified access to space technology programs, innovators and visionaries who are able to combine other disciplines in innovating new products and applications are constantly seeing the space business transforming at a pace that was unimaginable a few years ago. Elon Musk's SpaceX is a prime example. Who would have thought that one day NASA would no longer launch US government satellites into space? SpaceX reduced the launch cost to less than one fourth, less than a fourth of NASA launches. Jeff Bezos, under his Blue Origin program, is introducing reusable launch vehicles and visualizing offshoring production into space moon to leverage ben the benefits of zero power cost. Interestingly, the concept was derived from Otis Elevator in invention, which in some way is a reusable launch and recovery vehicle taking you from ground to the 100th floor repeatedly and halting anywhere in between. 
that one innovation made it feasible to design high-rise building, minimizing ground footprint, footprint, compacting habitation, and optimizing utility and support systems. The reusable launch vehicle is also likely to become our elevator to space and spawning innovative applications. These space applications can be broadly classified into firstly communications and entertainment, secondly imagery and analytics, and finally position navigation and timing services. India has already achieved great success in the first two applications and with the commissioning of IRNSS, India joins the select League of Nations with their own space-based positioning and navigational systems. This segment becomes particularly pivotal to national security if a GNSS system is spoofed or denied to an user. It can be catastrophic for logistics and transportation, finance, and many security systems. In this milieu, we are seeing a stream of new players from all parts of the world entering the space sector and paving the way to the space economy. In a sense, the world has already entered the new space era, which I would like to call the next space, so that subsequent improvements may be des designated as new space after next and then next gen space, which going by the rapidity with which business is adapting technology may be not, to be not too far away. Several disruptive technologies and innovative business models are in the horizon. And therefore, more of the usual incremental improvements may not and should not be the approach to adopt for the new space era. Ad adapting novel, ap extremely novel business models will be as important as adopting new technologies. O overarching elements driving innovation in the space sector are the key opportunities in national security and science objectives. The expansion of downstream space applications with new use case developing every day in the pursuit of exploration and explo exploitation of space. Traditionally, a key source of innovation for the space sector was public funded research and development through government owned space agencies and labs pursuing identified and sponsored programs with government funding. More recently, and in particular, the United States, new companies have entered the space sector. They are being funded by venture capitalists and angel investors, introducing a new source of innovation, a new source of innovation based on new business models, disruptive technologies, and the rigorous spinning in of terrestrial technologies, mass production components and mass production methods from other mature terrestrial industries which together are creating the new space economy. <coughs> this shift in paradigm is further being enhanced by the entrance of commercial actors from the internet economy into the space sector. These together are promoting in addition to the stronger spinning in of software and artificial intelligence techniques. Consequently, the rate of innovation in the sector has substantially increased and capital and operating costs in many areas have been brought down very massively and very significantly. The key technologies driving the business are newer and sustained access to space, opening up of 5G communication technologies, higher resolution, and revisit rates for Earth observation, <coughs> developing faster and more acu accurate positioning, timing, and navigation, exp exploration, and human flight, and cybersecurity, and data science. Let me dwell on each of these briefly. Let's begin with the access to space. This ac access was once limited to highly trained and qualified astronauts. But today, space tourism companies like Virgin Galactic and SpaceX are outlining plans to deliver various forms of commercial space flight in the near future. The key enabler is replacement of expendable launch vehicles with reusable launch vehicles. 
Due to this, its potential for cost reductions, reusability will be a long will in the long run likely become a key determinant for the competitiveness and com of commercial launch providers. The emergence of highly capable small satellite and small satellites constellations powered into space by small launch vehicles are showing a promising commercial potential. Upstream requirements would be to develop a new generation of space high performance engines capable of deep throttling for soft landings and controlling flight at variable speeds and altitudes and ultra light and ultra strong smart materials. Better thermal protection, for example. In the future, as propension technologies advance, development of small launches may also be helpful for low cost testing of a variety of technologies needed for reusability, be it for small or heavy launches. A second area where the new space economy is making rapid strides is in the field of communications. Developing economies and remote areas in developed economies often access the global information infrastructure only via satellite but traditional telecommunication market based on geostationary satellites they are expected to remain fairly stable but new dynamics to the market are expected to be provided by low flying small satellite constellations using hundreds or even thousands of satellites one web is building the world's First thousands of satellites, one web, uh, world, this is building the world's first thousand of satellites, one web, uh, and global communication network in space that will deliver high throughput, high speed services capable of connecting everyone to everywhere. These would require a different set of technologies, including concepts of next generation collaborative small satellite data telecom constellations, small scale transmitter receivers for optical inter-satellite links, etc. And the world's first mass-based produced satellite constellation network, imagine what it would do to the mobile telephony services. There would be a radical disruption as we know them, comprising of towers, retransmitters, lease line, etc. They will all be under disruption. When we speak of imagery and earth observation, a huge portfolio of passive and active sensors spanning the optical infrared and radar regions of elect electromagnetic spectrum are already in operation. Smarter sensors such as LIDAR and one and one SAR are in the offing. Hence, the full potential of satellite-based Earth observation has still not been unveiled. Nations and economies today are developing new use cases for a variety of applications in security, in security, in services, and in industry. Earth observation satellites of ISRO. Have been success, has been successfully able to establish many operational applications in the country, both at central and state level. There are a large number of users who utilize space-based inputs for various purposes and their numbers will only grow as better imagery and data interpretation technologies are developed. In the maritime domain, for example, space-based synthetic Aperture radars are able to direct ships and crafts who have gone silent and have become dark vessels. The purpose can be to beat sanctions, engage in illegal fishing and poaching, illegal human immigration, carriage of drugs, narcotics and small arms and several other businesses, all of which has a downstream impact on national security and the economy. Satellites are an important element of maritime domain awareness of the blue economy ecosystem with its ability for dark vessel detection, oil spill monitoring, illegal unreported and unregulated fishing, iceberg monitoring, pollution and erosion of coastal regions, etc. All of them combined with other technologies, satellite imagery can generate various options for voyage optimization by producing weather, area conditions on route, port congestion, security alerts of piracy and terrorism. 
Apart from the security portfolio, there are numerous other use, user cases being promoted. The significant the advances in defense and strategic space applications pale when compared with the commercial space sector that continues to grow and diversify at a really unprecedented pace. Entrepreneurs with a wide range of backgrounds and companies of all sizes are developing new applications and testing fresh grounds as new ideas potentially disrupt our thinking about use of space. They employ legacy industrial concepts like standardization, reusability and continuous learning while leveraging the potential of emerging technologies like cloud computing, advanced material and manufacturing and artificial intelligence. The farm and fishing sector offers great potential for earth observation and imagery by which satellites can mentor crop health and forecast crop yields with uh, timely submeter imagery. Many of our startups are working in these areas. They can not only detect but also identify pest infestation and plan irrigation levels to augment precision agriculture techniques. Much of this is being used by us using ISRO data with a startup in the aspirational district program where we are trying to raise productivity in the most backward districts of India. This helps predict crop yields and assist commodity traders in estimating market supplies, farm insurance, agencies in setting claims, etc. Soil moisture monitoring using satellite imagery can also provide an assessment of surface moisture conditions in real time across the entire surface rather than for a single point like ground-based soil moisture and weather conditions. Irrigated agriculture is the principal consumer of freshwater resources. 90% of our water goes into agriculture today. Most countries do not have a precise measurement of water consumption for irrigation. Remote sensing has been an effective tool to monitor irrigated lands in many locations around India. Uh, on the key goals under SDG 14, on the Sustainable Development Goal, goal 14, one of the key goals is to restore fish stock to sustainable levels. Recently, the Department of Fisheries has released the data on the National Marine Fish Catch, which shows the decline in the catch and also identifies emerging asymmetries in fish stock by type and location. Satellites using techniques uh, to determine uh, ocean, oceanographic, hydrological, nutrient analysis to locate potential fish zones. A reliable and timely advisory in the potential zones of fish aggregates will benefit the fishing community to reduce the time and effort spent in reaching the shoals of fish. Earth observation can also provide early warnings on refugee movements and infrastructure development in conflict areas to aid human humanitarian effort. Other new businesses that we are developing include insurance modeling through risk exposure models to make more informed commodity trading decisions. High frequency monitoring of oil and gas storage and pipeline monitoring for changes in volumes, pilferage and vegetation on the other, other application that has already matured to a great extent. In the mining sector, using various techniques to create digital elevation models to determine mining quantities and quality are critical. Using satellite imagery to develop DMs for water-starved or flood-prone areas also provide predictive inputs for planners. The ability of global navigation satellite system to continue to improve accuracies and position navigation and timing is becoming critical for a host of services, not only for navigation, but also for tracking and tracing of vehicles and cargo. While the new space economy is engaged in the benign pursuit of opportunities to improve the lot of humankind, there are several regressive forces as well. They are at work. Cybersecurity is a real and malignant threat to the use of space and its users. Satellites, satellite constellations and other parts of space segments have always been IT infrastructure incentive. And to give you an example, in uplinking command and control instructions or downlinking the information from other sensors and payloads back to the terrestrial user. 
vital infrastructure and services such as telecommunication, financial services, weather forecasting, safety and security services heavily rely on these space-based systems and therefore these systems need to be firewalled from potential disruptions. Space security and cyber security together referred to as a cyberspace constitute a unique technological domain that is becoming a prominent focus for international strategic, political and economic competition. Such a disruption can have a very, very significant impact on national economy and its security. The currently implemented security safeguard in space-based systems and its operations will need to continuously evolve in order to remain ahead of the curve of the disruptions and hackers. At a geopolitical level, nations need the capability to defend own systems and defeat antagonistic systems. The ASAT test by India is a testimony to that capability. Even as India has journeyed for close to 60 years in this domain, there are several strategies, both short term and long term, that may need to be developed by our scientists, strategists, policy makers to expand the utilization of space assets and increasing the overall size of the country's space economy. These include requirements that need to be addressed for India to maximize its gain and the potential of its strong capacity to build satellites and launch vehicles, particularly in application in agriculture, fishing, forestry, water management, urban planning, maritime domain surveillance, low cost, high speed internet systems for assisted education in rural areas, uh, health services, etc. R&D has taken us uh, to where we have reached today, but in the future, if we are Taking note of the world elsewhere, it is entrepreneurs alone and innovators alone who are rapidly piercing the frontiers of new space. And therefore, we need to encourage startups, entrepreneurs and innovators. We must also encourage the graduates from the Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology to seek entrepreneurial opp opportunities in the new space economy. And it's important that ISRO and the government must support them to create innovative innovation hubs and the incubation centers, appropriate test and trial and a lot needs to be done in this regard. While there are alternative views about the overall future of space, the impact that the space plays in our daily lives today is a given. It plays a very critical and a very, very significant role. Going forward, the Indian space program may need to become more inclusive and expansive with forging international space partnerships, both government and commercial, and developing models on how private business enterprises can participate in all aspects of the larger new space value chain, from conceptual design to components manufacturing and various space-based services. In the not too distant future, we could see the use of reusable launch vehicles traveling to space to collect free but highly valuable space debris for processing into new materials on Earth. As the corridors of space get crowded with satellites, a subtle, a suitable traffic management solution is an inescapable necessity. Let me conclude, and in conclusion, the space narrative is rich in sources of inspiration and international cooperation. But these engagements are also a story of advancement of space technologies. Questions related to the history of the universe and the solar system, the origin of life and the possibilities of extension of the human presence beyond Earth will continue to remain focal areas and purpose of space exploration for scientists. For lesser models like us, Progress in computational technologies and data analytics, robotics technologies, autonomous capabilities, newer materials and propulsion technology will make space-derived applications more widespread and extremely affordable. Costs for human spaceflight activities will be further brought down extremely substantially by using low-cost launchers and reusable launch vehicles. For the reusable launch vehicles and space habitation, the key technologies being developed include uh, 
development of entry, descent and landing technologies as well as moon rover technologies, development of low cost pressurized modules and habitats, mm -hmm. bioregenerative systems and many more. These are avenues to the gates of the new space economy. I'm particularly delighted and I'm extremely happy that the International Foundation for Aviation, Aerospace and Drones has taken the initiative to have this unique conference. This is truly a unique conference and I'm sure this will build up a consensus leading to opening up of the space for startups, for entrepreneurs, for innovators as well as lead to greater space security as well. Thank you very much ladies and gentlemen.